So we have discussed how we can allocate memory for the user processes. Now let's have also have a look at how we can allocate memory for the kernel itself. You have to treat the kernel uh, in a different way because the kernel has to maintain uh, data structures for different processes and buffers and for everything. Uh, and these uh, data structures are typically of varying sizes. Therefore, uh, the kernel, for example, sometimes make, it needs to allocate space uh, for a very small data structure. But still, if you continue, if you follow the uh, discussions we had up to now, you will have to allocate a full memory frame. Therefore, there will be a lot of uh, f uh, in, uh, internal fragmentation there. And that means you will not be able to use most of the frame. It's just wasted. So we need some uh, different way of handling uh, things. Another reason for uh, treating the kernel uh, memory allocation in a different way is the kernel also sometimes needs this time not small sizes, but actually it needs many uh, pages, but those pages now should be contiguous. That means the pages should come one after the other. Now, remember this is not the case in the case of uh, regular user processes, because user processes are uh, accessing the memory frames through the page table. So independent of how those pages were placed in the frames in the memory, through the page table, you access them in the correct order. So virtually to the process, it appears like the pages are consecutive, although in memory, the frames are not consecutive. However, uh, in the case of kernel, since it communicates with the IO devices, and while these IO devices are transferring data uh, into the uh, directly into the kernel buffers, the IO devices do not go through the pager and the page tables. So typically the kernel tells, for example, the DMA to transfer so many bytes from that specific de device at the specific address into this specific, uh, starting from this specific address. Now, if the data to be read is larger than the size of a page, the DMA, since it doesn't know about the pages, it will start from this address and start writing the data in the memory. And at some point, it will cross the boundary of the frame and directly with the uh, directly continue with the following frame. It will not jump to another page because it doesn't know paging. Therefore, the kernel sometimes also needs very large uh, data areas, data blocks to which it needs to write. Therefore, we should be handling it in a different way. Uh, so, one approach is the body system. This was the approach that was earlier used by uh, Linux, by the way. In the body system, you have a fixed size segment uh, consisting of physical contiguous pages. And as always, we're working with powers of two. So our allocations are with powers of two. So what you do is actually the following. It's easier to uh, explain it over the figure. So you have this physically contiguous pages. Let's say these numbers are, by the way, just for the sake of the example. Let's say it's 256 kilobytes. Now, if you need something like, let's say, 30 kilobytes, you don't want to just consume the 30 kilobytes over here and just waste the rest. Instead, in the body system, you split this into two equal parts. So each 128 kilobytes, let's call this these at this level as A. So this is A left and A right, so into two pieces. And then take one of them, in this example, we happen to go with the uh, left all the time, but you could have done it with the right, doesn't matter. 
uh, depends on which part is not used at the moment. So A left is split more into two. So uh, each one of size 64 kilobytes. So let's call these B left and B right. But note that 64, even 64 is too much because we know, I know I need only 30 kilobytes and I also know that half of 64 is still more than 30. So split this once again into 32 kilobytes. Now this is the smallest power of two that can handle 30 kilobytes. So we will not be uh, splitting further. You can pick either C left or C right, doesn't matter. But uh, give that to, uh, the, uh, the, to the data structure. Use it for the data structure uh, that you need. Note that there's still some waste, like you're uh, wasting two kilobytes in this case, but at least it will be small. It wouldn't be like using 32 kilobytes here. And when you need to, uh, for example, let's say we had given CL to this 30 kilobyte data structure. When we don't need that data structure anymore, we free up CL and we realize that CR is also free. So instead of having CL and CR separately, we uh, immediately do what's called uh, coalescing here. And those unused chunks would be merged into 64. Now, if this is also available, then these two would be merged into 128. So these are actually called bodies. CL and CR are bodies, similar to true for BL and BR. So you merge them into AL. Now, if AR is also uh, available, you can merge these two bodies. But if AR, meanwhile, was being used uh, for some other data structures, in that case, you wouldn't be uh, coalescing those two uh, data structures. An alternative is the slab allocation. So uh, in the case of slab, we talk about the slab, which is one or more physically contiguous pages, and cache, which consists of one or more slabs. Uh, so the cache is actually designed for using one specific type of data structure. So for example, you have a slab for uh, file objects or a slab for uh, uh, any data structure that you want to use. For, so for each type, there is, a, sorry, not a slab, there is a separate cache, let me correct. The cache is associated with the, the data structures. I just by mistake said slab. So these objects are actually instantiations for that specific data structure type. And uh, when a cache is created, of course, by default, it's completely free. And when you want to, when you need uh, an instance of a specific data structure, you create an object of that specific cache type for that cache. And you find a cache, preferably a cache that is not uh, completely full at the moment, so uh, but it's not free, uh, completely free either, not empty. So you prefer a slab which is partially full. So you, t in other words, you try to uh, fill the caches that are uh, partially full first, then you continue uh, with the others. Uh, so. It's like, for example, uh, we have different kernel objects. So let's say some type, some specific data structure type is, let's assume, three kilobytes. I don't care which one. So in this example, we have two different data structures possible. One requires three kilobytes. The other one requires seven kilobytes. So uh, the objects, we have two objects, each one of uh, size three kilobytes. They are in 
these caches and these caches are stored in these slabs uh, so for example uh, when you want to create a process in Linux there is a structure named task struct corresponding to a process which is approximately one kilobytes of memory so when a new task is to be created you have to create an instance of this specific data structure type so we will be uh, using one of the free uh, such objects uh, and the slab can be uh, in three possible states as you mentioned full empty and partial and the names are obvious either it's either all used all free or partially uh, full and uh, upon request the slab uh, allocator uses uh, a free structure in a partial slab if there is no free structure in the uh, in a slab then it will uh, take one from an empty slab if there's no empty slab then it will create a new empty slab uh, it works the same the basic idea here is actually these structures are already all this uh, structure is already created there uh, when you need uh, something out of it you use one of those free ones so the space is already uh, prepared for you before so when you need it it's very fast it's just uh, giving you the available space the slab started in Solaris so the idea was first introduced by uh, Solaris uh, Linux 2.2 starting uh, with Linux 2.2 uh the slab uh, started being used but uh, now it is in 2.6 linux kernel 2.6 it's slope uh, and slab allocators these are similar ideas so we will not go into the details but slope stands for the simple list of blocks so it maintains three different sizes of objects so depending on which size you want you pick one of these and the slab is very similar to slab but uh, rather than having per CPU queues it's maintaining such metadata that was supposed to be stored here in the page structure itself we will not go into the details of this as I mentioned 